What is up everybody? Bill with Honest Open Permaculture Hot Farm and we still have a lot of work to do in the gardens before we really start heavily planting. And one of the things on the list is to mulch all the pathways in the gardens. This way I can come in with that beautiful compost we've been making all winter and put it right in the bed. See how beautiful that looks with a nice mulch wood walkway? Compost in the bed, ready to go. No tilling required, no tiller required, no hand tiller, no duck hose, no none of that. Simply take the wood chips, make your walking path all the way around your bed, compost the bed, plant in the compost, you're good to go. See, I've been doing this method for around four years now. Uh, I started off with also mulching the garden beds really heavily with wood chips, but now I'm just switching to compost. And look at this bed, for example, on what we've been able to do in four years. So this is nice, dark, rich black soil. Let's start digging down because we should be able to find the soil, the native soil that's here once we get down there. Oh, I found an earthworm. So we're still going, we're still going. And now we're starting to pull up this yellow or orangey brownish sand. And that's a good four inches down. So in these garden beds, we've been able to build up the soil to this rich black humus soil about four inches. Now we still do have problems. Not every bed looks exactly the same. Some of them we still have problems with the grass encroaching on the ends. Um, so this year, let me show you what we're doing about that. Every bed that we're not using is going to stay tarped or covered. So the grass can't encroach it. And then also we're heavily mulching the spots that the grass does encroach. Like for instance, this bed down here, no encroachment. This is just, hey, and then under here, underneath this mulch, there is grass growing that we're trying to smother out. We got mulch here of cardboard and leaves. Oh, this mulch right here is what we pulled out of the beds. We had a bunch of old green bean stalks we just left in the bed, and then we just pulled them out and mulched it with that. Here we're doing again with cardboard and leaves. This bed we're keeping covered because we're not going to use it. Here again, we're mulching with stalks from the green beans that came out of this bed and this bed looks like we got some deer encroachment all right that's one reason i have some electric poultry net back here because i can run that all the way around it'll fit perfectly there's some of it still up on this side all the way around these beds charge it up and it should keep the deer out it usually keeps the deer out like i said we're going to be mulching more walkways and then on the next video, we'll probably be doing a lot of weeding because these two beds down here on the end need a lot of love. I tried to overwinter some collards and overwinter some broccoli, cabbage, and Brussels sprouts. The broccoli got demolished. I can't do that here. The collards, not so bad. Like, like look on the inside, the middle of these collards now. We got fresh new growth in there. So I could peel back all these old leaves right here, get rid of all them, and then the inside's gonna keep budding out for me. This plant right here looks amazing, actually. I did use row covers. Some, um, it's not plastic, it's a cloth that I get from Johnny's. When it got really, really cold, like in the 20s and teens, um, but if it's just gonna get in the low 30s, maybe upper 20s, I wouldn't even cover these up. I left them as they were. So the collards did good, the broccoli not so good. Well, this head tried to make it, huh? Maybe we'll try to let this go right here. Um, let this go to seed, and we'll try to take some seed from this broccoli since it almost made it without dying. It's got some pretty good stalks, pretty good heads in here. Okay, so let's try to let this broccoli go to seed, take seed from that. Uh, the cabbage got bit but it is still growing. There's a pretty good size, not big, I mean, but it's, it's a tough head. Tough head, it's uh, firm, that's the word I'm looking for. 
and that's pretty firm too so the, these cabbages did pretty well so hopefully we'll try to get some seed from these cabbages since they did well and overwintered so that's my objective here see if this will overwinter in my area if I can get some plants to do it then I want to take seed from these plants and keep those genetics going that can keep overwintering and eventually I can have plants cabbages broccolis Brussels sprouts, cauliflowers, different plants that can I can keep in the ground all winter and keep eating off of. Like these Brussels sprouts are have gotten huge lately. Some of them died, some of them rotted. But it overwintered here well. This big pile of mulch is going in between these two beds that need a little love. On the walking paths, around the outside, and then this whole nine bed system right here will be mulched and just be waiting for some compost. My garlic's doing well. And then after we're done mulching those two rows down there, we've got mulch over here that we need to do. We're gonna be putting in strawberries and some asparagus up here with a choke, the choke cherries and some blueberries. I also wanna transplant some blueberries that I have at the food forest and put them over here. And then at the end of our trellis system, we have mulch again. And this mulch will be going right in between the rows. It's already been heavily mulched with leaves and cardboard to help kind of kill back the grass that wants to encroach. We got another pile of mulch down there that'll come down. I do also need to mulch the mulberry trees. Hopefully they made it through winter, we'll see. And last but not least, we got this spot down here. This is our potato patch. And we're gonna take these three piles, put it all the way around. And then once we're done putting all the mulch in the rows, I will be covering back up the nine beds over here because they have been exposed for about a week. And my idea here, I got it from an idea I got from, uh, who was it, Curtis Stone, I believe. It's called a stale seed bed where you expose the beds, right? Now, any weed seeds that are in there are gonna germinate. We've had warm weather the past few days, got in the 60s. Actually, the past week has been pretty nice. We've got a, lot of, a little bit of rain. Good environment for those weed seeds to go ahead and germinate. So once they do, boom, you take the tarp, cover it back up. It smothers out all those weed seeds. You let the tarp sit there, you know, for a couple of weeks. You give yourself some time and that will kill off the weeds that just sprouted. And then when you're ready to plant, you pull back your tarp. All the weeds that were right there that were ready to germinate have already done so, so they're not going to. You'll have less weed pressure. Hopefully, we'll see. First time trying it this way. Oh, back on the potatoes though, once we mulch, what were they at? Oh, back above my head. Once we mulch those pathways, we'll leave it open so we can attempt the same thing. Cause it has not been exposed like these beds have. The uh, trellis system, I just heavily mulched it. It's got, um, cardboard directly underneath each trellis row and then it's got uh, a foot to two foot of leaves and then it's gonna get you know six to eight inches of mulch in between the rows like these let's go ahead and move this pile in between this row and around the outside of the beds So I misjudged it by probably about one wheelbarrows full of mulch. Down here at the end, I'm gonna have to bring in just a little bit more to round off that corner. And I will probably do that on another day because today we're spreading mulch, we're not hauling mulch. We hauled mulch the other day so we could spread mulch today. <laughs> so next we're gonna spread these four piles right here into this open area.
Look how good that looks now. Mulched, ready for plants. Now when we plant in this, we won't plant in the actual mulch itself. We'll move the mulch all the way aside till we get to the ground. Weed out any weeds if they're still there. Dig a hole in the ground, plant in the ground, and just barely mulch back over it. And of course, throw some compost in the hole. So now we've got a few more in this area to get done. Go down this tomato row, oh, tomato or cucumbers or beans, anything that runs I want a trellis I can do over here. That's looking pretty good. Mulch path on the outside, leaves on the inside with cardboard underneath the leaves. And last but definitely not the least, the potato area. Now I'm not sure if I have enough mulch for this big old area over here, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. And I know you guys are thinking it. Use a wheelbarrow. I know, I know, I know. I've been told many times. I just like doing it this way. I like getting that exercise in, if you will. I like it. Sorry. <laughs> Now we got the wood chips and mulch and the walking paths and around. We'll probably need like maybe two more wheelbarrows full. This, these um, big piles here were a dump trailer that I pulled back here with my uh, lawnmower. So I won't need too much more, maybe two wheelbarrows here and one wheelbarrow down there and we'll be completely done with the walkways for the beginning of the season. May add more as the season progresses. It depends on how much mulch we can get. I don't like to pay for it. I like to get it for free. Um, so I put out a bunch of feelers to uh, tree companies, Craigslist. I leave notes on people's windows and I try to get as much mulch and wood chips for free. So sometimes I'm going through a hot streak and I'm getting load after load and sometimes I'm not getting anything for months. Hopefully we'll get load after load and I can just keep applying and I won't have to worry about the weeds in the, in the walkway. But the beds, these are my potato beds. They've been built up with leaf compost for two years now and they are high as you can tell they mound up pretty high which is good for potatoes so I'll plant the potato deep down in here leave a crevice and then as the potato pops up I'll push more stuff around it and use the material that's here to mound itself up and then in fall I will take leaves put them back in this area retarp it let that add back into the beds, the nutrients that the potatoes took out. And these are very wide beds. They're wide enough for me to get, sit on this side and get to the middle, and then sit on this side and get to the middle. So they're not too big, but they're almost too big to where I can't quite work them. Same with this side over here. Okay, so we'll leave this untarped for a week. Let any weed seeds germinate that they're gonna germinate. Then we'll re-tarp it with the tarp 
kill off all those weed seeds and then plant potatoes. So now let's cover the nine garden beds. Well, not nine, we're gonna cover six of them. These three down here and then three in the middle with the tarps. Because we got garlic growing, we don't need to smother out our garlic, and we got two on the bit on the end that we need to weed out real good or mulch up real good because it's got a lot of weeds from where we we're over wintering those crops. All right guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, smash that thumbs up. It really helps push this video out into people that wanna see it. And if you haven't subscribed, I really appreciate it. Subscribe, bang that bell notification, I'll let you know every time I put a video out. Oh. <laughs>